Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Woody Allen Retrospective right here on PlanetTower.com. I am your host, Donald Wonder, and I don't have time to have a snarky remark from my calls right now, so why don't I just introduce the arsehole of the century, Simon Red? Do you know what I mean? You're too lazy. You're, you're feeling lazy today. You can't even call up with a good intro. You're just yeah. like, whatever, let's get to it. Too lazy, too hungry. Guys, you know what we're doing here. Hopefully you do. If this is, well, let me pretend for the few that might be just jumping on this ride right now. If this is your first time to the Woody Anna retrospective, guess what? We're discussing, we're having discussions, reviews, whatever you want to call them on Woody Allen and all of his movies. At this point, we're nearly at the end of his filmography and believe it or not, we've done over 50 videos on Woody Allen and he's been working every single year since the late 60s. God damn it. Woody Allen's in a lot of hot water right now. But... We are going to move forward because last time on the retrospective, we spoke about that movie with Colin Firth and Emma Stone, which was called Magic in the Moonlight. That was 2014. If you want to go back to that discussion, if you're watching on YouTube, there'll be a link in the top right hand corner. If you listen on the podcast, don't worry, I'll put a link in the description below because, of course, you can listen to this audio only. Don't ever want to forget to remind you guys of that. And we've got the website WoodyAllenRetro.com where we've just put everything in one place. If you don't want to check on the YouTube playlist, there's a website. We could just check out old reviews. So moving forward, guys, I want to remind you that these are spoiler discussions. We spoil the movie. So if you want to go in cold, if you want to watch the movie first and just know what you're getting into, then that's what we want you to do. Go and watch the movie, then check what we're saying out because we're going to ruin it. We're going to get into spoilers. But on this movie, uh, I'm going to skirt certain major plot points, even though we're going to discuss it. Cause really? Just one or two, because uh, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Anyway, Simon, so we're on to the next movie after coming from Magic in the Moonlight. Why don't you do what you do best, which is give a little synopsis description and tell us what we're talking about today. I'm more than happy to do so. And to be honest with you, for this movie, you don't even need more than the synopsis, because... It's that type of film. Ironically, off mic, we were both talking about the title of this film. You know, it's 2015's On a Rational Man. And we both looked at each other and said, you thought this was the Coen Brothers movie, A Serious Man, right? Yeah, <laughs> I did. That's, that's pretty much what I kept having flashbacks to. And I thought it was that type of movie, but no. It was completely different. Neither of us knew anything about it. So it's one of those films where like you go in completely cold, you don't know what to expect, and then you're like, what the fuck? Basically, it's a straightforward story to begin with about who I am Phoenix, who plays Abe Lucas, a isn't college it, professor. Isn't it pronounced Joaquin Phoenix? I thought it was Joaquin, like Julio. You know, the J is like who? Man, I'm telling you, some of these names... I Back in the day, I had the same kind of thing, but it's Joaquin Phoenix. Yo, yo, th that, that's, that's like a 30-minute discussion. Okay? I might even like, be wrong. I might even be wrong for all yeah, I know. Yo, he, he should be happy. He's not in the doghouse with Casey Affleck at the moment. Because they both did that movie. And speaking of controversies, oh boy. You know, let, let's like get into it. Sure. Mr. Phoenix. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to refer to him as Abe Lucas, as his character. Because this character <laughs> cool. has a simple name to remember. And his counterpart in the movie is a lovely Emma Stone playing Jill Pollard, a student. So as you can tell, there's a romantic angle there immediately. And Woody gets to show off some of his old jokes about philosophy, how it's mental masturbation, and really visualize the philosophy professor he was always making fun about. But this time in a dramatic fashion. First off, Mr. Lucas, Professor Lucas, whatever you want to call him, when the movie starts, he's at an all-time low. He's chubby, he's out of shape, he looks like shit. And as a typical Woody Allen lead, he doesn't believe in life anymore. He's like, life is repetitive. There is no point to day-to-day -day existence. It's full of suffering. His character, to be fair to him, tried to help. He did a lot of protests, charities, you know, non-for-profits. He traveled around the world, tried to give aid. And he came to the conclusion that it's all pointless because the world is just full of shit. There's just yeah. too many assholes. And that sounds intriguing. And this is where I want you to come in as quick as possible because the uh -huh. summary is almost over. Yeah. Because, yeah, Emma Stone, credit to her, I liked her much better in this movie than the last one, Magic and Moonlight. I think maybe then it was her first time working with Woody Allen and she was more of a character because it was a it was a period piece. Wow. But here she's me really me and you are definitely not uh, we're in disagreement here, but go on. <laughs> but not her acting, her character. I hate her character here. Not her, not the actor. Oh, 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 oh you mean the character. The character I, I, yeah. I was just talking about her performance. I thought okay. she was su supernatural. Like I, I thought she had genuine charm. 
we'll get into her character bits in a minute. But basically, she plays a uh, an intelligent but still stupid college student. She has a boyfriend, a f- solid relationship, but she just can't help but fall for this mess of a guy. You know, this confused soul who has this, you know, dramatic side to him. And he's so melancholy. And, you know, she, like she says in her opening monologue, she just wants to help him. Now, straight from the get-go, this seems like a bad idea because one of the most memorable scenes in the beginning is when he gets invited out to join the students for a little fun time. And there's alcohol involved, and then somebody presents the the guest host keeps a the, the 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 host. Her dad keeps a gun in the house for burglars, so they bust out the gun and start playing around. And the conversation of Russian roulette comes up, and Mr. Lucas, again being the responsible adult, drunk off his face, he's like, "You want to know what Russian roulette is? Check this out!" And starts playing it with a live uh, bullet, you know, with a real bullet. Just keeps pulling the trigger on himself, and everybody's like, "Whoa, what the fuck are you doing?" That was a hard scene for me to actually watch. Yeah, I agree. I, I thought, wow, this is interesting, Woody. Where are you taking this? You know, that was uh, quite dramatic and a uh, memorable cameo by uh, the kid who played uh, Nuki Thompson's uh, nephew in Boardwalk Empire. Oh, yeah, that you know, also. I want to see the kid in... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who also ruined everything in that movie, uh, in that series. But here, it's just a small part. He doesn't do much. And I think that's the only scene he's featured in anyway. But after that, the movie kicks into what I think is supposed to be the main plot point Mm -hmm. that after hearing something dramatic like overhearing in a restaurant Emma Stone's character and Mr. uh, Phoenix you know (laughs) Abe Lucas yeah Abe Lucas you know he has a revelation he's like I feel like I can do something useful with my life again because I'm a complete stranger and I just heard how this poor woman is suffering because of this asshole judge. I could take care of him. I could get rid of this guy, kill his ass, do something useful, get away with it, and make the world a better place. Even if it's by just a very small percentage, I can actually make a difference. Because praying, hoping, wishing is BS anyway. It doesn't work. You have to go out and do what needs to be done. You have to be a go-getter. You got to remain active which is great except for the idea that he's talking about murder but ironically and this is where i would like you to kind of give your opinion Mm because for me when the movie really became interesting that's when the actual film became super dull like i was really interested to see where this is going and then the movie just slowed down to a crawl and i thought it was really boring for the for the rest of it i just didn't really feel excited at all and all the plot lines just kind of watered down at enough thing. Yeah, man. Listen, listen. Woody Allen. There's an interview with Woody Allen where he says the reason why he likes to sometimes insert the element of murder in his stories is because he says murder is a common occurrence. You watch TV, it happens all the time. And sometimes it's not based around pure criminals. Sometimes it's based upon people that just do things randomly. And he likes to insert that in his movie. So in theory... What he does here is very interesting in concept. And again, he done that in Match Point. He done it in Cassandra's Dream. And from the from the get go of this movie, not knowing that it was even about that, I thought this was going to be a light romantic comedy about a guy in a psychosis. And then when it turns into another Woody Allen murder story, I thought, okay, this is another interesting concept. But the first thing that kind of ruins, really? hold on, the first thing that kind of ruins the movie for me is the tone. Okay. The tone doesn't work because it starts off like it's light and comedic. And then when it turns into this murder story, the tone is still the same. It doesn't, the tone doesn't actually change into a dramatic tone at all. Because in something like Match Point, it feels (laughs) like a drama from the beginning to end. The tone of this movie doesn't make, doesn't feel like what it is. And like you just said, it's so kind of dull. Even though this is about murder, even when we get to that point, it still doesn't feel like you're watching a murder movie. You just feel like it's just so tepid. And man, I was so upset with this movie just because I really felt like Woody Allen lost touch with um, some of the characters in this movie. Emma Stone's character doesn't make any sense for 2015. Now, I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna nit- to so. nitpick for all the Woody Allen apologists here. They're in university. Now, these are, I just couldn't see past these things. They're in university. Jacqueline Phoenix is the teacher. Emma Stone's a student. Who? 
Sorry, I, I couldn't understand you. Could you repeat who is the teacher? Jackie, Joaquin Phoenix, whatever. Stop fucking me. <laughs> Stop fucking with me. <laughs> While I'm on my ramble right here. He's the Abe teacher. Lucas. Abe Lucas is the teacher. Emma Stone, whatever. Stop. You know, you're really trying to make my flow right here. I'm going to edit the shit. I, I, I have tried. To, no, no, you got to keep it in, man. These are golden gems. Okay, whatever. So, basically, one of the first things that just kind of broke the thing for me is that they're in university. He's reluctant to be with Emma Stone because he's just... He, he, he sees himself as a drag. He's like, don't get involved with me. And I, ironically, for somebody who's a, the irrational man, he behaves extremely rational. You know? Good point. He's like, you should be with your boyfriend. He's much better for you. I'm a mess. I'm your teacher. I'm already kind of have seeing somebody on the side. And how many times does Woody Allen have movies where he's an older man, younger? So I was actually relieved that they weren't going to go that route. But here's the thing. When they do eventually go down that route and him and this student have this relationship, no one's the wiser. I mean, it's against school rules. Even her parents who are professors, no one does anything. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Even well, in the she's an adult. She's an adult. She's 20. She, she's 21, right? She's about to graduate. Yeah, yeah, so. that's fine. But it's against school rules. Even her boyfriend who knows what's going on doesn't do anything. It's like, what? This doesn't make any sense to me. You know, they're liberal. They're, they're, they're open-minded. It's just not realistic. There's not even a mention. So it's kind of like, really? Okay, but it's not... Look, I can see past it because it's not what the story's about. But not even to mention it is an oversight. I'm like, really, Woody? This is meant to be realistic, but you're ignoring this? Let's put that to the side. This whole university, by the way, it feels like it was. it's in the 1970s because no one's got a laptop. The students are very... They don't even feel like the 2015 students. They just feel you know, so composed. It just felt like this doesn't feel like... This feels like Woody Allen's really out of touch right now. It doesn't feel like we're in 2015. It feels like we're in the 80s right now. That is a very good point. I want to bring it up. But again, we might see it slightly differently. Because I thought he wasn't out of touch. I thought he nailed what so many people these days are freaking airheads. I was looking at the school. And uh, please, if you know where this was shot. Because the cinematography is beautiful. I mean, Woody knows how to invite you. And want you to live in this world because he can make stuff that I hate, like bicycle rides and picnics look like fun. But um, when I look at the school, wherever it was, sorry, I, the movie's just so dull. I actually forgot. I'm not quite sure uh, where it was set, but you can say it if you want to, or you can look it up, Jay, uh, in the background. But basically, when I look at the school, I was like, this is so hipster. It's so old and dark. It's like an old, you know, vintage building. I was like, where are the schools of the future? Wait and a minute. I... Why are you getting hipster confused with just old? You see, when hipster is when they're trying to recreate the times, this just looked old. This is, this is where me and you are in disagreement because I just see it as... Oh, oh, maybe. Maybe you're right. But I think I, it looked maintained. I mean, I'm just like, I'm look, I'm searching for the school of the future that I wanted to go to when I was a kid. Let me, I mean, let, me, know, let, me let me get off this point because, again, this is superficial. I want to kind of talk about some no, of the I'm just, the I'm just saying, like, where are the schools from, like, Gundam that are, like, in space and everything is computerized? Like, why can't we have colleges like that? Like, I felt like people just gave up on the dream, man. Guys, we're making jokes on that, but I just want to be clear. I just... The setting was kind of unrealistic for 2015. The students don't act like they're in 2015. It just seems very... This is what I mean by out of touch. It just seems like it's playing to what Woody Allen knows, but it doesn't play that reality. And to that point, the biggest criticism for the whole movie is that Woody Allen has set up this murder plot with Joaquin Phoenix and Emma Stone. And when... It, the thing I like about the with movie... With who, sorry? And the thing I like about the movie is that I like the pondering of Woody Allen always ponders is murder right and what's the you know the ethics to it and I, I think that was a strong point for this movie and I liked Abe's perspective on it even though we might find it morally wrong I like the question now Emma Stone is very naive very naive character Again, I thought this is 2015 for her to be this naive where her boyfriend's like, you're falling for this guy, right? No, you're just saying it. Everyone's like, you thought, no, no. And it just plays, her character plays so predictable throughout the whole movie. I was just like, it's, it's ter- I thought it was horrible writing. Woody Allen usually writes female characters really well. Emma Stone's character is written so straight and predictable and naive. I just found it to be a complete waste. In the last movie, Magic in the Moonlight, she's quirky, she's silly, she's even, obviously, the whole twist to it is that she's a fucking crook. But in this movie, 
this girl is just a naive fool who the only way she's actually swayed the, f the first time she's swayed by this guy is when he obviously does the Russian roulette thing and she's like oh my god he's a, he's so weird but then she's still she forgets about that and she's still drawn to him I've even, even attracted more to him I'm like what the, what do you come on this is nine, this ain't 19 series 2015 give the give the female some credit but then through the whole movie she's head over heels for this guy until she becomes uh what's that female character who can just f uh, figure out any clue uh back in the day she just becomes a mary sue to the point where it doesn't even make sense everyone everyone in the oh, whole wow. movie <laughs> hold on hold on let me let me clarify because I, I, I continue let continue. me clarify everyone in this movie becomes obsessed with this murder everyone's talking about it and i'm just that's like, a bit weird why is everyone talking about this murder every second of every moment to the point where it's so contrived that she figures it out that it just made me think of match point and cassandra's dream where woody allen constructs these murder plots and everything around them in, in a such more believable way in this movie it's so contrived it's so forced for her to figure it out and it, it just doesn't feel like it just felt like it got lazy and that's why i didn't like the movie because the plot the thinking parts were good yeah that was great the whole thing with raccoon phoenix and that idea is fine but i with, just sorry with whom with whom i'm gonna edit all that out so you keep doing that <laughs> <laughs> just wasting your time <laughs> But look, man, I honestly, I thought, my point with the main movie, it's just one of the one of his weakest murder plot ideas. He doesn't do it a lot. I think that have done it four times. Crimes and Misdemeanors, Match Point, Cassandra's Dream. But this is the weakest. And had a murder mystery, Curse of the Jaded Scorpion. He did a few crime movies. Those were so light and comedy. I, I'm trying to get down to the drama. And I just don't yeah, know, I, man. I, I know what you mean. He's usually strong when it comes to murder mystery. Like the mystery element is the one of the best things about those films we're here it's not that good it's not good at all to be it's honest really weak man it's so we and the worst thing is cassandra's dream if you go back to that with you guys i really i really came down hard on the ending with the adam put this like a double twist at the end of this ending now here he put in a very similar twist to match point i think it worked but the problem is the rest of the movie isn't good enough so it's kind of like people disagree with me they think that was just way too forced but i thought oh that was clever you you did you did foreshadow that so that's kind of clever it was like match point but i was just like hey the rest of it is just so bleh and lame that it was just like you kind of wasted that on this movie but hey man i'm i'm just disappointed with the movie it was a really good concept i really like when woody allen tackles murder with ordinary people people that are just just do it just because for whatever reason he's done it before but he was just really weak really really weak i thought to be honest with you and this is why i didn't really have like a very elaborate opinion on the whole film that it felt like woody allen watched breaking bad right which ran between 2008 and what 2015 around 2015 2016 2014 i forgot when it ended but again that that was kind of affiliated with uh at least as a distributor sony pictures and this was sort of distributed by sony pictures as well at least a branch of them and I thought maybe that inspired them to revisit this idea of a college professor having like this mental renaissance, you know, like this awakening where he finally finds out his own personal truth of what, how he can empower himself and find something in life. You know, that's how it felt. Like it felt like a, a Breaking Bad type of story. That show was so influential for a little bit of time. It seemed like everybody was trying to replicate an element of it. You know, you had so many movies that just out of the blue became Breaking Bad. Even if the concept didn't fit, they just forced it in there like that. Mm. What was that movie with Justin Timberlake and Ben Affleck about gambling? Runner, oh one my runner. God. Oh my God. They, I they tried that movie. to like turn it into an episode of Breaking Bad with all sorts of crazy uh, like invisible ink and these overcomplicated plot lines and schemes. I was like, this is a movie about online gambling. You're really stretching it. And again, this just felt like it was inspired by that. But unlike those Brad movies, I thought the concept here was solid and could have made an interesting, um, an interesting TV show where you have this character who has this rich history of trying to live a fulfilling life. He's a philosopher at heart. He writes a lot. He published a lot of books. He's very intelligent, very smart. Again, a Walter White type of guy. But he's at a low point and discovers, you know, I'm fulfilled by making the world a better place by removing assholes. Mm, yeah, like uh, like a Death Note kind of character. Actually, you know what? 
I yeah. think you're right. This would have worked better if he be actually became a serial killer. I think it was yeah. going down that route. If they just Which remember... I thought he was from yeah. the intro. Sorry to interrupt you, but you no, said no. you thought this was going to be a romantic comedy. I thought the big dark comical twist is going to be because she kept referring to him as this is a messed up guy. I didn't realize how issue filled he was in the beginning. That I oh, thought, yeah, there was okay. foreshadowing. There was foreshadowing. You're yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he probably killed his best friend. I was like, this guy probably killed a bunch of people leading mm. up to this point, mm. you know, and mm. that didn't end up happening. But he didn't, you know, going down the path of becoming a murderer. And I thought, OK, the idea in a modern context for an intelligent character to go to the audience and say, I challenge you to convince me that eliminating assholes is a bad thing. Like, think of all the damage one person does while you just stand by and do nothing. I'm thinking of a, a particular orange guy at the moment, you know? <laughs> you know, actually, you saying that, you just you just made me realize why I just like this movie so much. It's because all these other murder mysteries, murder movies, except for Cassandra's Dream, he lets mm-hmm. the killer get away with it right and this time the guy did more or less create the perfect murder and he forced the story to resolve in a way that was very unpleasant and unbelievable you you had a stronger message if this guy got away with it because he he did it so well because he felt so righteous it made perfect sense but no for some reason we said no i want to correct this so he kind of gets found out and then not really because the movie ends and you don't even know if emma stone actually came out and it's a, it's implied, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You don't yeah, know if she I, actually said that. You're he'd... right. You're, you're right. Yeah. And it's implied, and she probably did. Probably. But again, that, that, that's why it feels like a TV show to me. Because it, it felt like the, the final arc of this character, where he's really challenged of like, okay, you did this righteous kill that you can completely justify, and you can argue your point of like, hey, you think murder's immoral, but from my perspective i did somebody a favor and i made their life better and the world didn't lose anything with this guy but then when it comes to his security will he actually become a cold-blooded killer who kills to protect himself you know that's the ending of the film like will he be morally corrupted which kind of proves that no matter how hard you justify murder it still leads you down a path where you you be just you just become a killer. You still become a criminal. You become morally flawed. You can't really get away with it. And they foreshadow in the movie, but in a TV show, you can build up to it. You can have certain situations, and you can really explore the downfall of a character and kind of make your own argument. If you're gonna raise this point of like, I think you can get rid of assholes and make the world a better place, and you don't have to be that serious about it from a moral perspective, because let's be honest they do so much damage maybe we would be better off without them yeah. and then the counter argument is you know the price is too high to pay you can't get away with it once you go down the path you will become part of the problem and but you know what man there's not enough time because of yeah. the romantic comedy just keeps going on and we have to go on bicycle rides with these guys and all this stuff and art house theaters I, and yeah p- please elaborate but i thought would make a great tv show but overall it was just dull and when we got to the end I didn't really feel much. I didn't feel like, you know, I understand that this was supposed to be the moral turning point of the story where like, ah, see, he's not that, he's full of shit after all. You know, he's not that fair after all. But here's the thing. The reason why uh, it was so unsatisfying for me, the ending as well. Look, even if Woody Allen wanted to resolve that either karma gets him or someone finds out, why does it have to be Emma Stone? This bitch was cheating on her boyfriend serially (laughs) through the whole movie. She was so naive she was just so unlikable for the whole... There was not a redeem... Honestly. She's young. She's young. She, she's full of life. She wants excitement. She never met a guy like him before. You that's, know, and that's And that's why from the beginning, I said it's so out of touch because honestly, I could, I, this is a girl from 1980s, 1970s, that, uh, a female character. Even, I don't think even he would write Diane Keaton to be like this in the 70s. This is so plain and... Pla- honestly, this is... Woody, man. I know getting all this shit for being accused, sexual, or whatever, but forget all that. This was just one of your worst female written characters, period. Honestly, and the last movie, I thought she did much better. Not as an actress, actors, and let me say this for the record, nothing wrong with the acting in this movie. I think they're all good. I think they're all fine. I think there's even a, sorry, I didn't, we didn't mention all the other characters, we just focused on the two main, but there was another Yo, woman. it's not even worth mentioning. No, there was a woman that she was having that, uh, 
whatever his name is, I don't want to say it without you jumping on me ass again, but... Abe Lucas. Abe Lucas. There was another professor who was... Uh, she was kind of having an affair with him. She's a very good actress as well. Big in the 90s, by the way. I can't remember her name right now. She was really... Uh, Dr. Posey? Yeah, yeah, or exactly. Say? Yeah. She was good. She was good in the movie. She wasn't in the movie a lot, but... No, man, I don't really want to go on and on about this movie. It's a disappointing movie. If you go on Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb critics did not like the movie. Again, they thought it was a, a very failed attempt at a very good concept. Again, I don't want to just shit on the movie. Very good concept. Very good acting. Decent cinematography that is set on campus in one location. So, meh. But he just bundles it. And I just think there's so many plot holes. It's very weak. And I just... The whole setting. The university, the time, the female character... I don't buy none of it. The only thing I buy is this very down in the dumps character who starts the movie very, very cynical, very pessimistic, then falls into complete despair and then gets this righteous belief system, which is awesome. Very good concept for a movie, but everything around it doesn't build. It doesn't really just didn't write the movie very well. It, and the way it ends was just so forced, very forced ending. So for me, I didn't like the movie, but it's not a whole saying that. I don't think it's a horrible movie. But of his own filmography, it's very weak. Very, very weak. Um, Yeah, uh, I have to agree with you. And I know now why I forgot where the movie takes place, because it's fictional. The college and the town is kind of fictional. So uh, apparently it's like, uh, well, it's, it's set in New England. It's filmed in New England, but the college itself was made up, if that makes sense. Yeah. So like I said, uh, I kind of know girls like emma stone who do silly things like that i mean i wasn't too harsh about that i think her character kind of came around at the end sort of i mean she's not the best Renan female character woody has ever done and i think you know diane keaton had that special kind of way of bringing his characters to life you know that's hard to replicate i liked emma stone's acting i think the movie predominantly sound around the uh, Abe Lucas and you know his moral conundrums but I don't think because of the love story and just general uh, dull moments there never seemed to be enough time to explore that to really make the movie interesting Woody Allen is great with cinematography great music and painting a picture but I thought all those great little moments were scattered in between just a bunch of filler you know just yeah. a bunch of empty fluff yeah. and I would have loved to see this concept in a TV show where Woody Allen can come in and direct an episode or two and do his signature touches with the look and feel and the sound and music and cinematography and, you know, keep that concept going, but make it more lively and explore different ideas. The way it is, I think the movie is one of his more forgettable filler films. You know, yeah. it's it's, a, it's 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 not a bad film. It's just he can do so much better. Sure. That this almost feels like you know what this feels like this feels like another like another test run where he tests an idea and then years later he's gonna do the ultimate version of this where you're like okay yeah, okay yeah, this yeah. is a better version of that story you did in a movie 12 years beforehand but the problem is he's already done a better version of this movie <laughs> match point <laughs> this well, I, I would i would argue it is it, different it's very different it's it, very very different i'm not gonna lie it's different enough in match point the characters are are driven into a corner Sure. You know, and have to do something here. The guy does is not in a quarter. He 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 actively comes to the conclusion that this is something that's good to be to do. You know, this is a service to humanity, where the other characters are well aware that what they're doing is a bad thing, is a crime, and they have a lot of guilt. And then they kind of work through that in the movie and end up in a different place where they started, but still kind of the same. By the way, another when I was watching the movie, just a little aside, I was thinking. And you know, you're going a lot of what you just heard over over a conversation. I mean, for all you know, she could have been exaggerating, she could be lying to her friends. I was expecting there to be a twist that it wasn't <laughs> she wasn't what she was saying wasn't exactly the matter of fact. And that would have been another good like he killed someone and it wasn't quite true. Cause I was like, you really just believe in someone verbatim just over a conversation, which I thought was ridiculous. But it turned out that that was a case, which I thought, uh, that's that's just like rolling the dice on someone's life. But whatever, I mean, I, I thought it was weird, but, you know, whatever. Look, again, I'm, I feel like I'm just crucifying this movie when it really isn't that bad. It's just we've seen so much better, especially in this in this sub of Woody's movies that it's kind of frustrating. But 
guys, again, I'm sure the apologists are going to hate me for this. I can be with you and a fan and not like some movies. And anyway, like I said, the critical reception on IMDb Rotten Tomatoes, they're not fans of this movie. People think this is very forgettable. It's a shame because the talent is so good here. But, man, that's it. Let's wrap this shit up, man. This was, this was the same length as our normal reviews. I wanted it to be quick, but hey, it is what it is. Simon, <laughs> thank you for joining me on this one as always. That's fine. Um... I guess uh, I guess uh, good things ahead because uh, I heard good things about the next movie, so looking forward to that one. No, I didn't, but ironically, let me take some, <laughs> let me let me run away with something you just said. Did you say you were the Woody Allen TV series? Did you say that multiple times? To uh, Simon? I, I was trying to give you an easy si- segue. I was really trying. I, I was, was going. Like, I was this thinking. This motherfucker gonna bite, bite the, bite. You know, bite the bait. Take the bait. You just kept on talking. I couldn't do it. But anyway, we're doing it now. So, guys, guess what's coming down the line? We're the completionist of Woody Allen filmography. So, yes, we're going to be talking about Crisis in Six Scenes in just about two weeks from the uh, uploading of this video. So, stay tuned for that. Guys, subscribe to the channel, to the playlist, to the Woody Allen Retrospective. Say thanks for watching. All links in the description down below. And we'll see you on the next recording.